We all know that a lot of trucks on the road have problems. Today we're going to look at some of the common problems Chevy owners have to face and show you how to fix them. Welcome to Truck U, I'm Matt Steele. Hi, I'm Bruno Massel. Now we know that no matter what kind of vehicle you're driving, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Fiat, luxury European import like Bruno does, whatever it is, eventually you're gonna have some problems with it, you're gonna have some issues, it's just the way that it goes. And today, we wanna focus on a handful of those issues that you might be having, especially if you drive some Chevy trucks. Now we've been to a lot of forums, we go out to a lot of events, and we hear a lot of people talking about an issue going on with some of these Chevy trucks, whether it's a full-size truck, a Tahoe, or a Suburban. What's going on is there's a problem happening with the ABS module. Now it doesn't happen to every one of them, but it's popping up here and there a little more often than not. Right. And with this specific truck, we found that there's an issue going on. The brake light would come on, the ABS light would come on, and it'd be both intermittent. So this guy went down and had this truck looked at, had the ABS sensors checked out. They all checked out good. Figured he was okay and just kind of ignored those signs. Well, the battery started dying on him and that became a real problem. So what's going on is this ABS control box up here, this module has gone bad. And what it'll do is if you let the ABS module go bad, the ABS pump will continue to run nonstop and it'll kill the battery. So not only will the pump wear out, but your battery will die on you and that's not a good thing. So it's something you can't ignore anymore. And the problem with that is the fact that when you shut everything down, you can't hear this pump on this particular vehicle, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the battery dies and you're thinking, man, what was it? So you've got to diagnose the problem, which we have, and you figure out, okay, there's so the issue. The module's right up here and it's just simply four Torx, uh, Torx bolts that hold it in place and you've got two little connectors and then you can get access to it. All right, get that out of there. But while you're doing that, let's talk about what the ABS system is and why it's important. Sure, most of you know that's the analog brake system, but if you don't know, when you hear the words ABS and you're thinking, yeah, what is that? Here's the deal. Back in the days, on a wet road, if you were trying to avoid an accident, you always were taught, pump the brakes. Right. That way the tires don't lock up and you're not sliding into the accident. Well, that's what the name of the game was, right? Well, the analog brake system, the ABS, does that for you now. It's a pulsating type deal. So when you hit the brakes, it pulsates, it keeps the tires from locking up, that way you can still turn and hopefully you can still turn and avoid the accident yeah. as opposed to sliding right into it. You know, a quick fix would be to go ahead and pull out the fuse because that'll save the battery from dying. The problem is it's not going to help you with your ABS because you've got none whatsoever and defeats <laughs> the whole purpose. Right. So let's go out on a table and show you guys how this thing looks on the inside. I'm guessing it's not supposed to sound like that. Did you do that upon extraction? <laughs> Is that what happened? Now we got this out and we did a little bit of surgery on this. We didn't actually cause that rattling that was already doing that. But we cut this off and you can take a look at it. You know what that says to me right there? That says stay away and keep out. Very confusing. That's what that does. I'm with you on that. There are a couple of different options that you have when you want to replace this piece. Of course, you can go to the dealership, spend a lot of money, plug this piece back in, boom, you've got it fixed, but you're going to spend a ton in the process. Or the other option is a little bit cheaper. You go down to a junkyard and you find one that's going to match for your vehicle and you can plug that in. But the problem is that you've got a part that's got an inherent problem in it and replacing with another potentially bad part. You're just putting a band-aid on the situation. So what we've done is go to Brandon at ABS Fixer and he's actually got a way to remanufacture these that solves the problem inside of the part. Yeah, they get in there and fix a bunch of different things. One of the things that they address is the relay issue because this one's got a relay in it and the relay burns out and that's what keeps the pump running and then depletes the battery. That's the problem. So one of the things that they'll do is put a bigger relay in there that can handle that current and it's not going to burn out. So that's one issue that you won't have to deal with anymore. Right. He'll go ahead and resolder all the connections and make sure that everything's working well inside. He'll do a diagnostic on it, do a re-weather seal on it. So when you get it back from him, you know that the part's going to work and it's been now upgraded to handle a heavier circuit load so it won't burn out again. And it costs about 150 bucks plus shipping is what they charge. Yeah, which That's is money fair. well spent. Yeah, right. no kidding. All right, let's get this one back in. You got that? Yeah, you filed that no one. No rattling. That's a paperweight at this point. Got it? Yep, got that out of the way. Now there's another issue that a lot of guys are dealing with that have these GMC trucks, and that's kind of like a, like a clunk in the steering, like the shaft's a little bit loose. And you'll notice that when you're driving around a parking lot sometimes, you'll feel it in your hand and you're thinking, man, what is this all about, right. you know? You know, it's become so apparent that GM's actually posted a bulletin about this and a way to fix it as well. Actually, there's two different ways to fix it. The first one, much cheaper than the other. It's for about 10 bucks, you can go down to your local dealership, pick up this lubricant right here, and what you'll do is you have to take out the intermediate shaft or the slip shaft. So you'll take it out, 
lubricate it, put it back in, and it seems to be working in most of the cases for at least the first six or 10,000 miles so far. Now, they've also got one where you can go ahead and replace it with a new shaft itself, much more expensive. So we're gonna go the cheap route first. If that doesn't fix the problem, we can always go back in because it's pretty easy to get to. Right, the first thing we had to do was get this shaft out of there. So there's a bolt on the bottom side of the steering column in there. We took that out, a little bolt that ties it in right here. We got those separated. I can slide this out and get it disconnected and slide that up to Bruno and grab it. All right, dude, it's coming you your way. You got it? All right, bud, I think I got it. There you go. Okay, so here's our intermediate shaft. Now, what we have to do according to our directions is go ahead and extend the shaft out, first of all, then take our lubricant here and squirt it down inside this little fitting. Now, what we're gonna do is basically try and force the lubricant down through the bottom of these splines here to help lubricate them. The way we're gonna do that is take this plug here and force it inside like that. Now, this might take a little bit of trial and error because it's not easy to get it in. There's not a whole lot of room to work with. So once I get this in, I'll compress the shaft, I'll force the, um, the lubricant down here. Then I need to pop this back off and slide the tube back in. That should complete our fix. So good time for us to take a break while I get this done. We come back, we've got a couple more issues we need to address with these GM trucks. Welcome back to Truck U. Now, so far, our problems have been pretty easy to diagnose, whether it's a brake light coming on or something that you feel in the steering, it's easy to tell there's an issue. Well, there are oftentimes issues that aren't so easy to tell, and one such issue is right here inside your transfer case. Now, here's the problem they've got with the transfer cases. Now, it all comes to this OEM pump housing. Now, these transfer cases have to have a pump to get fluid through the tight clearances to this planetary gear, otherwise it wouldn't stay lubricated. That's okay, the problem is the housing itself has got this little tight knife edge on it. Now, when this moves back and forth over time, it'll wanna wear into the rear housing like this and actually create a hole if there's enough wear. There's a little anti-rattle clip there that the factory puts on, which is right there. You can see me messing around with it. And this knife edge that Bruno was talking about bangs up and against this corner. Strangely enough, it hasn't broken the clip off yet, which it could over time. But you take a look down into this corner right in here where it's just beating on it and beating on it, and there's already a hole starting. I mean, it's really starting to eat out that corner a lot. And if it's undetected, which of course it's going to be, because you're not going to know until right. it's too late, it's going to pop a hole on the backside right about here. So if you get a hole right there in your transfer case, you've got big problems. Yeah, not only are you gonna have a mess on the floor, but it'll literally eat itself alive, not having any fluid going through it to lubricate it. So the fix is from Merchant Automotive. They've got a little transfer uh, case pump upgrade, and it all goes to the pump housing itself. So this is gonna replace the OEM one, and the difference is the edge here, it's got a lot more surface area, so it's gonna distribute the load. So this will go into place like that, now it's got a big footprint so it won't eat into the side of the casing. It'll distribute all the way across there. Yeah, it's almost like a snowshoe effect. You know, if you're walking around in snow in regular tennis shoes, whoop, you got right through it. You put on the big snowshoe, it spreads it out. And there you go, you got a bigger footprint, you stay up on top. And it's kind of the same principle right here and it's gonna quit eating that corner out like that. Right, so now we have to do is take these bearing off and take the gears off to get the OEM housing off, put the new one on. And this thing is it, like we caught it in the nick of time, so it was a good thing here. Yeah, you're kind of rolling the dice with this because you don't know how it's gonna be. We're actually glad that we found this because that's good. That means we stopped the problem before it got bad. Welcome back to Truck U. Today we're taking a look at some of the common issues that GM owners face. Now we've already looked at the ABS module, that's handled. We've looked at the steering shaft, that's taken care of. And now we can come up here and take a look at the speedometer. Now we're having some issues with this one as well. So we've taken out the entire gauge cluster of the GMC truck and what we're gonna do now is try and diagnose the problem. You can see that some of these originally weren't reading right. We had you know no oil pressure and RPMs were out of whack and so right. was our, our speedometer. So what we need to do is kind of get this, this panel off and start looking underneath. Now, before you can do that, you need to get off these little dial indicators. Now, the mistake a lot of people make is to go in here with a screwdriver, as most guys do, and just try and pry sure. stuff out of the way. Absolutely. But these are really delicate and they'll break. So what we've got is a little trick. Take little spoons like this, and 
This way you'll pull it on either side and they'll pop right out and you can put them back in, you're not breaking them. That is a good little trick right yeah. there too. I like that so one. So I'll go ahead and get these all out of the way and then we can go ahead and take a look at some of these little motors that drive these dials. These are the stepper motors and this is what they look like and we'll see these here in a minute as soon as we get this cover off of here. But these are actually what drive these little dial indicators right there. So on the back side they're going to read the information or they're going to read the information from the computer and then that's going to transmit up here and that way you can see the gauges. So that's what spins them around. Let's get in here. You ready? Yeah, one more to go. Yeah, don't rip that. <laughs> you know? This All is right. pretty delicate in here, so there so we, we go. So we get that out of the way, and then we can slide this cover off as well. Now here's where the motors are that I was talking about. So you've got the motors, you've got the lights in here, you've got all kinds of stuff going on. And look at this. This is pretty cool. When you get it all out and you think, man, all of this is really this one board right there, you know? Now, a lot of people, you know, like I said, want to try and replace these motors, but you look on the back side here, it's not something you just pop out. These are soldered in, and this is a pretty sophisticated circuit board. So unless you have a lot of experience dealing with this kind of circuitry and you can solder this precise and do this well of a job, well, you're probably better off not trying to take, tackle it. It's not a slight on anyone to say, you know what, this might be above my skill right. level. If that's the case, we've got an option for you. So here's the little stepper motor, too. This is a little visual example. So that's what's going on with nothing there. And look at that. Looks like a little duck. Okay, so if you don't want to do all this, like Bruno said, that's fine. This is pretty advanced. There is an alternative. You can hook up with the guys from Florida Speedometer, and look at this, a whole new cluster. Everything is remanufactured, all the parts are new, and you can literally just plug this right back into the equation, and you're ready to roll. Yeah. There's a section on our website called Ask the Host. It's where you guys write into us and with questions you want answered on the air. Now keep in mind, we get lots of questions every day. We can't answer them all on the air, but we do our best to try and sift through ones that most of you guys can relate to. So the question of the day comes from Ken, and Ken writes in saying that, first of all, he is a huge Matt Steel fan. And Ken, aren't we all? Now the question is, though, it comes down to water spots. He's saying that he can't get some of the ones off the glass of his vehicle. He's tried just about every glass cleaner or can't seem to cut it. Now, a lot of us run into the same thing. It's more like a hard water stain than it is just a water spot. So what we found that works for us is you're gonna take a glass cleaner, but you're really just gonna use a glass cleaner as a lubricant. Because what you're gonna do essentially is buff the water spot out or the water stain out with a little bit of steel wool. Now you wanna find some, some fine steel wool and you buff gently because if you get too aggressive with it, you're gonna scratch the, the glass. But this seems to work for us pretty good. Give it a try at home, Ken. I think it should work for you as well. Now, you guys at home, keep writing in the questions, and we'll do our best to get as many of them as we can get your questions answered on the air. Thanks for writing in. Welcome back to the Duplicolor TV garage. Now, last time I was here with Brian, the other Brian, which is cool. You guys are doing some amazing things. Now, we were getting it ready for this final coat, right? But we talked about all the prep work that went into it, and you guys had a lot going on when you were doing that. Right, and after all that prep work was done, we were finally able to put down some color. What we used was a Duplicolor paint shop system. It's lacquer paint, right? and it's pre-reduced. Now, we like this. We use it at the shop all the time. You just no mixing, no reducing, no recoat window. So if you mess up, you can just get it out of there and paint right over it again, too. So it's, it's almost foolproof to use. Right, and this system includes primer, base coat, mid-coat effects, and clear coat. Now, you mentioned those mid-coat effects, and if you look at the hood on this thing, real nice because from some angles, you don't see this, but when the light hits it just right, it really does pop out and it's just another little thing that you guys added to the vehicle that really makes it look great. Right, that's our mid coat clear. That's in between the base coat and the clear coat and after that we lay down five coats of clear. So you probably get more positive looks from this side of the vehicle I would imagine. Right, you want to be the driver. <laughs> Definitely. Regardless of all that, it looks phenomenal. Great job. Congratulations hey, to you guys thanks. back at the shop for doing something that's going to turn a lot of heads. It was fun watching along on the Duplicolor TV website as well. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. They've got some more webisodes coming up, some bonus features if you will. Some more things you can do with the paint shop system and there's a couple of them that have all of the assembly going back together so you definitely want to head to the website and check it out and see how this all happened from the ground up. Protect your custom paint job or project truck with an LMC truck cover. This will help you protect your truck from acid rain, harmful UV rays, and sticky tree sap. The durable synthetic fabric will not stretch or shrink over time. An elastic is sewn into the front and rear hems to ensure a snug fit. In the summer, a cover will keep your interior cooler and protect it from fading. In winter, it can keep the snow and ice off your glass and finish. LMC truck covers are available in three levels of protection. 
and will actually pay for themselves by reducing the number of times you need to wash or wax your vehicle. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Welcome back to Truck U. If you're driving down the road and you're starting to notice some minor transmission issues, you might want to look into this. It's the transmission stop slip with leak repair from Rizlone. By simply pouring it into your car, you can improve your transmission's performance. It'll get rid of things like lazy shifts, uh, slipping going through your trans and your clutch packs and your bands. All that stuff will get reconditioned. And it'll also help with leaks, you know, future leaks and ones you've got now by reconditioning the seals inside it. Now what this is also going to do is renew and stabilize your existing automatic transmission fluid. So if your transmission fluid isn't as properly maintained as it should be, this is going to help you out. And we know there's a lot of that going on. We know yeah, that. Yeah, and it works in all manuals, automatics, whether you've got a truck, car, or SUV. This is the stuff you need. Yep, it's the transmission stop slip with leak repair from Rizlone. Here's another cool idea. This is the spray on sound control and the spray on ceramic insulation from Lizard Skin. I love that name, man. Lizard Skin. How cool is that? Yeah, and it's a cool product too because it's something that's going to give you 100% coverage, whether it's sound deadening or you're getting temperature control. This is a great product because it'll spray on and it'll look good for a long period of time. Now, it's easy to do. It's nothing to be intimidated by. It's simply a one step process. You open the can, you stir it up for 30 seconds, and it applies with simple tools using shop air. Now, take a look at what we did to this hood right here. We sprayed on the sound control, then we let it dry for 24 hours, then we were able to spray on the insulation. Now we've got the good heat control too, right? So we've got the best of both worlds. Here's another thing. Now I do a lot of big truck events where there's a lot of mud, some watery conditions, and this, that, the other. If you're going to subject your vehicle to that and the mud and water is going to get up in there, if you have one of those old mat systems for this, it's going to get in between. You'll get water in between the mat and the sheet metal, and then you can have some corrosion. So with this, like you said, it sprays on 100% coverage, and you've got sound control and temperature control, and it's just right in there, and it's not going to corrode. And the, the finish is great too. This is what you're going to get when you spray this stuff on. It looks good. It's got that nice matte finish, but if you want to, you, you can sand it and paint it and you're going to get a nice professional finish like this, whether it's going to be on steel or aluminum or fiberglass or wood, it can match your vehicle, look like a professional look, which is what it's all about. It's the spray on sound control and the spray on ceramic insulation from Lizard Skin. Masterlock is a company entirely devoted to helping you keep your stuff and helping keep other people from stealing it. That's what it's all about. Yep. And this is the Auto Sentry wireless anti-theft system by Masterlock. Now, a lot of people like to have a car alarm in their, in their car, but professional installers cost a lot of money. And you know what? It's a job normally a little bit too much for the do-it-yourself because there's a lot of sophisticated wiring in cars today. This is your answer. It's an easy install. You take the siren, you mount it up under the hood, whether they're this bracket or double-sided tape. All you have to do is tie it into your battery. From then, you take this little pressure sensor, stick in your cigarette lighter, and that is it. Yeah, you've got a couple minutes into that whole install, and this really is where the magic happens right here. So this is plugged in, and this is the low pressure sensor. And what this does is it kind of reads the whole vehicle, and this is going to tell you if somebody's coming in, whether they open the door or smashed in the window. However, they try to illegally enter your vehicle, this is going to send a message to the siren to go off and alert the world that something bad is going down. It's the Auto Sentry wireless anti-theft system from Masterlock. Here are a couple of new power programmers that we got from the guys over at Edge Products. It's the Evolution CS and the Evolution CTS. Now both of these are really powerful products. They're both for gas and diesel trucks, neither or, and they're going to give you a lot of customizable features, which are great. Now, they're going to give you your horsepower gains and torque gains and better fuel economy, which is great these days, but it looks cool inside your vehicle right. because it's fully customizable. Like we've got a little logo in the backdrop and it'll continue to monitor all the functions of your truck, which is great. Yeah, it's also a diagnostic scan tool. This thing can replace a ton of gauges. They are great indeed, but you know what? We talk about the CS as a good system right there. Both both of them do what you were just saying. But if you want to spend a couple extra bucks and go to the CTS, you've got a few more options. That stands for color touch screen, so you've got that. And you can add the optional backup camera right there too and work that into the whole system. Very cool indeed. It's the Evolution CS and the Evolution CTS from Edge Products. And you know, these are going to be nice little additions to the Truck U family. Hey, we need to take a break, but we'll be back right after this. For more information on anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit our website at truckutv.com.
Welcome back to Truck U. Today we've been looking at some of the common problems that GM owners face, and we're not beating up on GM. We love those guys, and we'll attack some of the other manufacturers here in the future because everybody's got problems. But you know what? This next problem can happen to anybody in any vehicle with plastic headlight covers. What happens is over the course of time, these lens covers start to either yellow or fog over or get pitted and scratched so bad that the light bulb behind it doesn't shine through. You lose all optical clarity, and the whole purpose of the headlights is gone because you can't see anywhere. So it's a dangerous situation now. You've got one of two ways you can solve the problem. You go out and spend a ton of money on a new lens or you can save a bunch of money and do it yourself. Now, Permatex has got this great headlight lens restoring kit that in about 30, 40 minutes, you get complete optical clarity restored, and it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, it's a nice little kit. It's got everything that you need. It's got multiple stages of sandpaper, got some gloves for your hands, the polishing towel, and the polishing compound. So we've got everything laid out. We can start rolling on this baby. Now, what we've done is gone ahead and taped this off and have so you can kind of see a quick before and after to see the difference between one side that was treated and one side that was untreated. Now, we soaked our sandpaper in water at for 10 minutes like the directions say, and it says to start with either a 1,000 or 2,000 grit sandpaper. Now, the higher the grit sandpaper, the finer it is. We're not seeing any real pitting here or real deep scratches, so we can start with the 2,000 grit. So you want to go in one single direction with each piece of sandpaper. So the 2,000 this way Matt's going, when it hits it with the 25, he'll come back the other direction. So now it's time to switch over to the 2500. Now what you want to do is uh, fold it over in half and we'll go the opposite direction where you want the 2000. Now you're not going to sand until it's going to be clear, but at least the, the lens itself should look uniform at this point. Okay, I've got the finishing touches on this direction. I went in each direction for about seven to eight minutes. Got that out of there. Got a little mess. Bruno, you can clean up there since I did all, there's a little something for you. Cool. I got off easy. Let me switch this. All right. Get that good and dry, and then we can apply our polishing compound. Now what you want to do is use the uh, little flannel sheet you've got that comes with it, the little cloth, you want to wet the end of it with the polishing compound and go in a circular motion. And while you're hitting it with the, the polishing compound, you should actually see it start clearing up. All right, the polishing is done. We'll nice wipe that work, off buddy. and voila. Right? Little elbow grease, it never hurts you. It looks a lot better. I tell you, this little headlight lens restoration kit from Permatex is a great way to go. It's cost effective. It doesn't take too long, and it breathes a lot of life back into these old plastic lens covers. Man, I like that. We did a lot of things today to breathe life into those GM trucks, from the transfer case to the gauge cluster to ABS, the ABS module, that shaft. I mean, yep. all these common problems that people are having back at home, I hope we helped you out with something. So if you got a GMC truck, you might be like, aha, now I know how to fix it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Next cool. week, we'll take on the Toyotas and the Nissans and all that other stuff the out there. The list goes on and on and on, but that's for another day. We're out of time. We'll catch you next week right here on Truck U. You see this here? Very cool. Oh, oh thanks, dude. That was good. You oh, missed sorry, just, just a tad.